Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. We're in my backyard. <laughs> no, I'm kidding guys. We're at a water treatment plant. We're going to do some exterior uh, soffit repairs. I thought we'd show you because uh, Jay's got a mix for me and there's only one guy who can plaster and do the work on the scaffold. So uh, it's pouring rain, or at least it was. It's kind of drizzling right now. It's about 45 degrees. A lot of people call and say, hey, can you put stucco on in the cold weather? Yes, we're about to. So we'll show you how, what we're doing when we get to that stage. All right, guys, I'll show you what I saw. This, this was just emailed to me two days ago. And I've done a lot of work at this water treatment plant in the last 15, 20 years. Okay, what they had is this. In an email, he sent me a picture. I said, dude, can you fur me out? Give me some strips to go here and there so, so, so that I can have something solid to staple it. He says, no, we can't. I said, can you remove the whole thing? He says, no, we can't. I said, can you do this? He said, Kirk, can you handle it or not? And I thought, fair enough, man. I can handle it. Um, we don't have nothing here. So if I used a 3.4 mesh, it will just bounce all over the place. I've got a rib lath. What is rib lath? This is rib lath. And you put this on so you're looking into the Vs. And this is 3 8 rib lath. They also have 1 8 rib lath. This is what I'm going to use. I'll show you guys some tips or secrets uh, of what you can do if you don't have the ability to um, or the knowledge of how to do the ties. See now, when I use this rib lath, for example, I have to use machine screws. And we're going to machine screw right through here to attach that rib. Me, I just looked at this uh, well, half hour ago and I thought, well, gee, okay, I know how to do that. I'll put my first piece right here and I'll tack it or attach it to the metal strips with machine screws. And once I get that on, I will cut this out. And when I cut this out, I will leave a quarter inch excess. Why? Why will I leave an eighth to a quarter inch? Why not just cut it flush? If I cut it flush, it'll be spongy right here. And every time I try to plaster it, it'll go up and boing, all that stucco will go right back in my face. Have I had that happen? Pfft, too many times. So that's the way I'm going to do it. But you folks, there are other ways to do it. Say, for example, you could cut some pieces of wood and you could stick them in here like so. All right. I'm going to show you just an easy way to do this, guys. And you could now you have something to attach to. But if you notice, I got a whole bunch of uh, drills here. One of the drills are to um, <coughs> go through the stucco. The other is to countersink through the stucco so you don't see the head of a screw. Now this screw gun, which I'm going to use anyhow, is to attach, say, the wood. And, okay. Oh, that's pretty solid. Okay, I'm going to push this one back here. This is just another way of doing it, guys. I don't really need to do it like this, but a lot of you folks say, well, gee, is there something solid? You can do it that way, too. You could also put mesh up here, too, and go with a little hook, which is, we'll take this tie wire right here. Um, let's see, I made one of these little guys right here. You take tie wire, and you use nippers. Nippers, not snips. I'm going to use the snips to cut this. And you make a little hook. You gotta, you gotta kind of press this down. You go through, through the mesh, and pop it right back down. And then you take your nippers and tie it. That's another way to do it too. But that's a slow way. So, uh, getting off of all of that, I'm going to attach this uh, mesh now. And this this mesh is called rib lath. I'm going to grab a handful of screws. These little bitty guys. I actually came prepared. I got some one inch, two inch, because I wasn't sure what the heck was here. So I'm going to put these guys in my pouch and attach this. How many of you expected me to hang this piece by myself? All right, let's go all the way to the end. Right to there. You got it, Jay? Got it. Jay's got the appropriate jacket, a wool jacket for a cold, rainy, wet day. I'm going to... Let it go? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, we take these machine screws or self-tappers, whatever you want to call them, guys. Um, they're designed to screw into metal. And I just need to get one or two started. 
And once it started, beautiful. There's one, let me get one more in it. These self tappers, you should have a good battery, a strong battery. Helps to have an impact driver as well. Yeah, it does. Let me put one more, Jay, and then you yeah, can jump ahead. down and I'll. That's how cold it is. I'm roughing it for you guys, so. <laughs> I hate to wear a jacket and try to do this. Come on now, get in there. You're fired, get out of here. Okay, get. This self tapper sometimes just don't want to tap right. Okay, hit the road, Jack. Let's get another one. One that won't act crazy. All right, here we go. Let's see if this self tapper actually taps. Okay, we're in. You can let that go. Okay. I'll, sh I'll show you guys one more thing now. Um, your snips. How many of you guys understand what these snips are for? These yellow ones are straight. They'll work. These red ones are slanted. Why do they have a slant? And why am I wearing gloves? Because what I'm about to do now, if I'm not wearing gloves, my hands will bleed in about 30 different spots. It's like dragging your hands through a cactus. Wear gloves, guys, when you're cutting any kind of soffit mesh because it's razor sharp. Okay, what I'll do generally is, now I'll, I'll have to work with my angle, meaning, okay, this, these are angled, so I pull this down just a hair. And remember earlier I said I wanted a quarter inch over. I've got a quarter inch over here. Now this one, I don't. So I have to look at it and cut it. And these, these uh, snips got to be sharp, guys. And if they're not, it'll do just like that. It'll just, uh, it won't cut. Okay, goner, let's try these guys here. And it helps to wear good glasses too, because this stuff will go in your eyeballs. All right, so I'm going a quarter inch. I'm gonna take this whole thing just like this. Because once I get it, there's a benefit, you pull it, and wear gloves, guys. And then you take snips. Whichever ones are the sharpest works. Uh, these tend to dull out real fast. So as I do this here, I'm not actually going to use that piece of wood that I installed. And again, oh boy, these snips uh, aren't the greatest. But can I use them? Ah, sure, I will. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go through my truck where I have about 20 pairs of these and find the sharpest ones that I have and I'm not going to bore you with 20 minutes of me doing this. Alright guys back to sticking in these self tappers I found a couple strays that snuck in the box. This is not a self tapper. That's what gave me such a hard time a minute ago. So I left it a little long here. Why? Because now I just tap it in and it taps in there guys. It's kind of rounded, but that's okay. That, that works. And what I do is I take these self-tappers now and finish tapping them in. Oh, come on now. All right, let's go with some of my bigger self-tappers, and they're about an inch and a half. And these longer self-tappers are for wood. Well, actually, they're for metal, but... See there? That, that helps, guys. If you're not certain of how to do it with uh, the way I'm explaining, you could also go this route here, too. This is a good way to do it, and it's an easier way for somebody wanting to save a little time and you're not knowing how. This wire cannot be past this, uh, this plane here. Now, this stucco is an inch thick. Commercial, usually inch thick. Residential is usually half inch. On the top of here, we have its mushroom an inch above it. That's how it adheres. It goes above the wire, mushrooms on top, and that's what holds it all in place. And of course, we got these windows covered because they're anodized. What happens when stucco hits anodized frames, regardless if it's uh, the light gray or the dark gray? 
it etches immediately and, and turns it black. Similar to if stucco hits redwood, it turns it black almost instantly, and you got to sand forever to get that stuff off. Anyway, how many of you guys with a show of hands want to see us stucco this? One, two, three. Okay, we'll show you how to stuck with two since Jay got a mix and there's only enough room for one person anyway. I figure if I got to do it, I'll show you guys how to do it too. Okay, guys, we're at the fun part. Since you want to see how to put this uh, stucco on, this blue stuff, it's just a bonding agent because I want this, this lip here, this one inch thick. I want some, something, a grip right there. And now Jay mixed me up some mud. Uh, this is a tough thing we're about to do. We're trying to go an inch thick against gravity on a really cold and rainy day. So I'm going to get started here. So, okay, let's see. Best way to do this. Now what I want to do is I want it to mushroom. I want it to mushroom in back. If it doesn't go through it, it's just going to keep falling out. And, okay. Again, this is a this is a tough thing to do on a rainy day, but we'll give it our best shot. Okay, so right here, we want it to mushroom through, and to try to to try to hang wet stucco on on a cold day. It's it's sort of tough too, but we we do the best we can. So you see how it keeps pulling out. So we have to mix stiff stucco because I not only want to try to do the scratch coat, but I don't want to come back here and do a, the brown coat. So once I do this scratch coat, I'm going to go ahead and brown it. I'll try to do some of the tough stuff first. What I like to do, guys, is my perimeter. And this actual swimming pool trial that I use, it's not a full radius. It actually works quite well as far as the flexibility. You get it in there, flex it. Yeah, it's going to keep falling, but the nature of the beast, guys. You got to go into the belly of the beast to make this stuff work. Slow. Slow and easy. That's the way to go. Another thing with, with this particular stuff we're doing, if this wire is bouncing, <laughs> I would go like this. I would put it on and I'd push it up and it would spring back down and go in my face. For example, 3.4 mesh. 30 years ago, I was renting a house in Hayward and I told the owner, hey man, how about if I stucco your house and you give me three months rent free? <laughs> He said, sure, what a deal. Well, it was a good deal for him. My rent was like $900 a month, so I stuck with his house for $2,700, and he had soffits all the way around the house. And that particular soffit right there, that's called 3.4 mesh. This is rib lath. Rib lath is rigid, much, much more rigid than that cheap stuff but that has its uh, benefits also. Now, we've got to take a break to clean that lens. All right, guys. Cardinal sin is to work under. What I should do is I pull the mud here and I work this way because we're going to continuously get dropouts. But anyway, I started it, so I will finish up this way. What I was getting at with that story is my buddy, who is uh, also a licensed stucco contractor today 30 years later and one of the better ones out there besides yours truly he was I said hey man can you finish this soffit for me we both got in the trade at the same time <laughs> and because I had that wiggly wire he would do it and he'd go bang and it would all go all over him he did a four foot section and by the time he was done he was drenched in mud you, he couldn't even open his eyes and the homeowner and I went over and I said, man, you're having a hard time with that. <laughs> well, this fella threw the tools down and says, let's see you do it. You can't do this crap. It's falling all over the place. And the homeowner and I, we kind of fell out laughing because I had told the homeowner, look, it's going to keep falling because we didn't do 
we should have used a different wire. But anyway, things that make you go, hmm. What I'm going to do here is continue to scratch this. Now, yeah, it's beating me up a little bit, but nothing I can't handle. Jay's going to mix me up another bucket. We're going to scratch this entire thing. This particular mud here has luminite in it. What is luminite? Luminite is an accelerator. Accelerator. Why do we need an accelerator? Because it's cold and we're going uh, over, over an inch thick on a ceiling. So uh, we want this to set quick. So I'm almost out of mud here. And by the time I finish stuccoing this, we'll show you the brown coat too because I can do the brown coat much faster than I can do the scratch coat. Why? Because I'll already have a, a coat on it and the brown coat will adhere to this coat. Nothing to it. Anyway, we'll see you in about 20 minutes. All right, guys, we are finishing the scratch coat. Jay made the last of the mud. This mud here is a wee bit better. Not so stiff. Um, now, guys, when you're doing one coat or two coats or three or four or five, it's real important not to bust the packs. What does a pack mean? This stuff sets, and when it sets, don't mess with it. Otherwise, you over trowel it, you over darby it. Whether or not it's on a wall or ceiling, it'll just keep falling. Uh, don't do it. Uh, so, we are going to allow this to set for, you see, that's what I'm talking about. But, how many of you wish I was right under that patch? Don't worry, you might get your wish before this job's over. You put it in, you put it in slow. I'm going to put one more little uh, bit on it. You see how slow I'm going in. I'm pushing with a lot of strength. I want it to go above the wire mushroom. Thus, hold it. Okay, now I'm going to waffle it. What does waffling it mean? Take a scratcher. I'm going to put some, because we're going to take a lunch right now. And that will give it, I need about 15 minutes. If I give it an hour, that's so much better. I couldn't even hammer through it if I gave it an hour. And I just lightly put some scratch marks in it because this is going to set. Woo! It tried to get me. You got to try harder than that. Harder than that. Okay, so we're putting some scratch marks in it. And I like to waffle a ceiling. That means just like those waffles, you go both ways. That way when I put the next coat on, it will adhere in that. And sometimes when you're doing this, guys, it will fall out. But we got a little bit of mud. I got my two dropouts. I will fill them. Again, got to go real slow. And keep in mind, anybody says, hey, that guy sucks. He can't even do a ceiling. This is one inch thick, guys. And it's the first coat on a cold day. So it is kind of difficult to do what we're doing here. Now here. All right, get in there, dude. All right. Oh, yeah. Let's try that one more time. Or as many times as necessary until it will stay in there. Okay, now I'm starting to mess with it. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. And in one half hour, that'd be hard as a rock. I can come up here, pound on it, and my next coat will go on like a breeze. All right, guys. We gave that about a half hour, 40 minutes. How cold is it out here? <laughs> to warm up while waiting for stucco to dry. Kind of like watching paint dry. I had to go for a run in the rain. Uh, how's that for ironic? Okay. Jay just mixed this mud up here. And what I'm going to do is do it the right way. Uh, this is still a little soft, so I'm going to try to keep it a light hand. Meaning, just get it enough. And hopefully this first coat has cured enough. If it hasn't cured enough, well, I'll get a drop out. Is a drop out the end of the world? No. That just means I'll have to come back to it. And what I'll generally do in this kind of circumstances is plaster the whole thing, or put the third coat on like right now. And if I get a drop out, I will finish this video with a big hole in it and just Luminate the heck out of that one little piece and 
do that off camera because we want to get this camera equipment put away because it is raining out here. Okay, so we're coming here. A light hand, if I hit it too, too heavy, it's going to fall right out. It's going to disturb the pack. I was mentioning packs earlier. You cannot play with this stuff, guys. You play with it, you disturb it. And although I'm doing like three coats today in a matter of back-to-back, -back, if you folks should ever say, well, gee whiz, I think I'm going to do a soffit, do your scratch coat, allow that to cure a day, and come back and do your brown coat. Oops. Okay. Because this takes some practice to do both in a day, well, let alone in, a, in an hour. And when I say both, I call it a scratch and a brown, but technically I've done about three coats here to get to this depth. All right, light hand. I don't want it to fall. Come on, guy, don't fall. All right, beautiful. Okay, and after I get this on it, then I'm going to float it. What is floating? This is a sand finish. I could get that sand finish. No problemo. Okay, now that I've got all of that, I'm going to start here again. And remember earlier I said I don't like to work over my head? Well, I'm going to chance it. Light hand. Just enough strength and push to apply it, but not enough to disturb the coat that I'm applying it on. By the way guys, soffits do take a wee bit of practice. Fact is I've done soffits eight hours a day for months at a time. And that's how you get pretty good at anything. Months at a time, just doing one thing. Okay. All right, don't want to disturb the pack. Almost got it. And then after I have this, I get the fun stuff of floating it. And that again is hitting it with a sponge float to bring out the aggregate. What is aggregate? It's a fancy word for sand. Or if you're doing concrete, it's a fancy word for the rocks, the aggregate. Okay, now here I've got to go a lot thicker because I didn't scratch this thick enough. Nothing I can't handle. Come on now, get in there. Don't play with me. Get on there. Beautiful. Okay. All right, almost got it. One. So far, so good. I didn't get all the cure time that I would like, but at the same time, it's getting cold out here. Another thing too, which you guys can't notice of me doing this troweling is when you steel trowel something, you close it. I am steel troweling it, but I'm going on edge, meaning it's allowing it to breathe. When you steel trowel like this, flat, it's steel trowel, it can't breathe there. It takes a little bit longer to dry. So after I get this on here, I kind of put the trowel on edge. That's that kind of stuff. It doesn't really show like here. I put it on edge to dry it out now. Otherwise I'll be here forever waiting on stucco to dry. All right. What the heck was that? Oh. 
Okay, there's that. And a little bit of, so far so good, no dropouts. Either that's amazing or that's good mud. That's good mud mixing for, on Jay. Who's holding the camera? I need this one last bit for right where you're at, Jay. You gotta try not to fall off this staging. And I just need a little bit more mud right here. Ah, uh, drop out. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is pick up the green float and float it. We continue floating. And again, floating is just bringing the aggregate sand to the surface because that's what they have here, sand, sand surface. Might lose this little bit, but we'll come back to any dropouts. Now, what we're doing is matching the existing finish. You know, the funny thing is, <laughs> I did this ceiling about 14 years ago. And no, the stucco did not fail. The pipe inside the ceiling failed, so this time they put a copper pipe in. Uh, they get clogged up with leaves and junk like that, so uh, I'm matching my own finish. <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, we, we floated in like so. You folks get the idea. Uh, I'm going to cut it and call it quits right here, but this is uh, where we're going with it. We look at it, we float it, and this actually helps it dry too because it opens the stucco. And what we do is we feather into the existing. You can see how much it's raining here. And that, well, it's turned to a mist now. That's cool. I'd rather have a mist than the, than the pouring rain. And Jay's pretty soaked right now while I stay dry. Hey, that's the advantages of doing the stucco. Isn't that how it always goes? <laughs> it just seems to work out that way. I guess it's a coincidence. We're going to get a drop out here, but no worries. Anyway, guys, my name is Kirk Jason on the camera. We thank you folks for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching, and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.